Hey, this is the second part of the episode I started last week. 15 questions that designers get asked a lot. The common ones. Today, I'm going to go a bit deeper and tell, talk about my personal style, my work ethic, collaborations, and things like that. So there are only eight. So I hope you stick around to the end. So before I start, yes, I know there's a shadow popping up here. That's because I finally got my first professional light. It looks like I may need more than one. I thought I'd only need one, but so far I think this is good for the light consistency. I have been struggling a lot filming. Most of the time I film in the evenings and sometimes it gets really dark. I'm sure you've noticed. And I also just want to apologize. Last week the video was a bit grainy. I did not notice until I was editing and there was nothing I could do about it. I hope today's is clear. Sometimes it's very difficult for me to notice it while it's on camera. I notice more when I'm editing. So please bear with me and let's begin part two. Thank you for being here. Welcome new subscribers. Let's start. Um, this question on work ethic. I think for me the most important thing to consider when you are in fashion as a designer is consistency. Be consistent in your time, when you um, how you deliver, or at least keep your word in the, be consistent in that way. Be consistent in your finishings and how you produce your clothes. Of course, different clothes have different finishing, but have that consistency that people know what to expect. Also, your communication and customer service and things like that. I know it's difficult sometimes to be consistent with that aspect because sometimes it involves other people that's not yourself my advice would be definitely consider training and having a um a set of rules that you operate with in your company so that whoever you bring on board is trained to work the way you work basically a work culture in your workshop or in your store or in whatever it is you're running so for me it's it's very important and i definitely advise that for anyone running their brand so this question about my background i have shared it a bit um, earlier in the year when i was talking about how i got into fashion and everything like that but just uh, a, a small summary i guess is i have always been very artistic um doesn't necessarily mean that I would have ended up just doing fashion. I could have ended up doing multiple forms of art because I'm generally very good in the arts. I am good at writing. I am good at um, illustrating. I understand IT. And the reason why um, maybe um, it would be difficult for me to integrate those things right now is because I haven't practiced. Even with fashion and making clothes, I've had to practice over a number of years for me to be this good. So for me, as much as I am very talented in other forms of art, I definitely need to put in the work and practice to make it excellent or to make it good. So that's a bit about my background as um, a young person trying to get into the art. So if you have a young person trying to figure out if they should get into the art, it's all about practice. You don't expect that you're just going to be good just because you've tried it once and then you're good. There are very few people who are like that. And it's always good to just practice and practice and practice so that you can be able to know if it's worth pursuing. And if someone is willing to purchase what you've made, that is really like the big litmus test. If someone is not willing to pay what you've made, then maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe it should be a hobby or something you do to relax. Um, another thing about my background is that I was trained in fashion, so it's not something that I am just self-made. I always did a little bit of hand sewing here and there. Um, our school education required us to be able to not sew, so I knew how to do a few things here and there. But being trained really helped me going to college, so I'm professionally trained to do this work. So, and I have also worked for somebody as well as um, work for myself. So next week, actually, that's what I'm going to dwell on working on someone versus working for myself Having employees versus outsourcing and all that I'm going to de de um, get more into that So if you have any questions along those lines, please 
send them to me leave them in the description i know people usually have a whole bunch of questions so go ahead and ask looking forward to engaging with you next week but that's in a nutshell the background so greatest strengths and weaknesses um okay um for my strengths i would say that i'm the kind of person who doesn't easily give up and that um it means that even when i'm trying to do something i'm going to talk specifically about my line of work even when i'm trying to do something and um, i that is new i will usually push it to the point that i need to figure something out and i'm always trying to find a way to do new things so that's a strength for me um i like learning so i'll always try and, and implement new techniques into my work and learn new things so um i can get very tired and very bored of trends so if something is really trending and everyone is doing it chances are will probably not do it and sometimes it's very difficult for people to understand that because that's basically how fashion works in kenya people really like you to, to to put you in this box of doing what everyone is doing the truth is yes maybe it's making more money um than what i'm doing and everything like that but sometimes for me i get very bored very frustrated and the thing about me which is now a weakness is sometimes when i really don't want to do something i tend to make mistakes on it and sometimes i allow money to motivate me to do something and for me money should never be the motivator it should be um more than money money is a great um motivator in terms of I'll earn money from the work i'm doing but doing something just because i want the money is normally not very good for me personally if i have to do it on my own but sometimes i have had to do it because i need to pay bills so but i always just try and give my best so my strengths are probably that I like to give my best. You'll always expect something new from me. I'm always working on my skill to improve myself. Um, and I will always keep my word. I, I try as much as possible to keep my word. It's very, very rare that I don't. Um, and I will always be upfront with you. If I can't do what I said I'll do, I always speak up about it. My weaknesses are, of course, I get bored very quickly um i can be i can get irritated as well very quickly so i like decisiveness and i know sometimes my clients are not decisive and it's it's actually okay i know it's a process for everybody but for me i know it affects me to some degree but anyway weaknesses are there for for people to to learn from and also working with other people it really just depends um working with people who do what i do is it's a bit more difficult but generally i don't really have a problem working with people i'm pretty much a team player i'm sure i have mentioned more strengths and weaknesses but i don't know maybe people who know me might mention weaknesses i have with my work but yeah that's it for me my personal style it's so strange my personal style has changed so much i think the fact that now i can make clothes i can be very fancy if i want to most of the time if you find me at home i'll be casual really dressed down but when i go out um for events and things like that i really like to dress up and it doesn't have to be really over the top but i can go over the top if i want so for me it's a blend it really just depends on what i'm doing uh, generally of course with my work i always have to be in comfortable clothes it doesn't make sense um sewing with long nails i really don't understand that by the way how you sew and you have long nails i don't know but i know a lot of people have higher tailors but for me i always keep my nails short um i'm not much of a makeup person um i only do makeup once in a while and i only do professional makeup because i do not even know how to do makeup on myself it's just not something i find a priority um yeah so oh shoes i am a tall person so that means i have big feet for an average woman in kenya so it's very difficult for me to get very very nice shoes so i just get what i can fancy as it is or not um, i just try to make it work if I get, if I do find a really, really nice shoe that I like, um, I usually buy it. 
yeah but please guys not everyone has small feet in kenya please get shoes that fit people like me and please make them nice some of them are so yeah dull but i know majority shoes for people with my shoe size tend to be very practical for work and office and for me i really don't need that um yeah so anyway in a nutshell uh, that's my style i would spend i spend more money on earrings things like earrings um and lipstick once in a while is i like the darker the shade the better so sometimes i i don't spend a lot on makeup so if i do have extra money to just buy something that i will um but more often than not i like to make things so there was a time i had shoes made my shoe person no longer i don't think they do that anymore so i'm scouting for someone else who can make shoes for me it was much easier for me at, um, to come up with a solution like that but yeah no, no, sure, that's me. So the area in fashion I would really like to work in um, is costume design. I've, I've been interested in costume design for a very long time. I'm not sure how to get into the market here in Kenya because actually I, I, I don't see people advertising who we need costume designers and how basically they work because I know the process of working as a costume designer is very different from um, this other type of fashion because you have to make clothes in line with the characters that are being played and everything like that but I'm, I'm really interested and I'd love an opportunity so if you're out there and you do acting and things like that it would be awesome preferably I would actually love to do costumes for music videos I think those would be more fun for me but yeah please call me we'll see what we can do um other than that i am in ready to wear already it's very expensive because you have to do volumes for my Myanmar brand and of course i'm also in the made to measure with the stage by Myanmar. so yeah so costume it is um how I handle stress, um, I guess it depends on the kind of stress. Sometimes I can be stressed about a deadline that I might not meet. Sometimes it could be a difficult client. Sometimes it could just be me, I'm sick or I'm not in the mood. So I handle it in different ways. Um, one thing I know is that I always have to be well rested. Rest is very important to me. I don't joke around with my rest time. Um, if I need... To push through a certain job at later on i can go on holiday i try to do holidays when i can afford it but maybe once a year um as i said rest is very important to me so for me how well rested i am is good for how well i will work so there's that um generally um the advice i would give to designers especially when you're doing consultations is to avoid a lot of mix-ups and all that always ensure that with every consultation you have someone with you in terms of a witness to be able to make sure that you have done your consultation in a way that you there, there will be no misunderstandings later it's a way of reducing stress if you do not have such a person then maybe you should consider doing a follow-up email or a follow-up message to break down what you agreed on with your client even before you start the work just just to avoid misunderstandings so sometimes just having processes and policies in your work, um, how you in how you work, really helps reduce stress, especially in client um, relationships. Yeah. So same thing with your tailors. Sometimes they misunderstand and mess up, and it becomes stressful, and you have to repeat work and all that. Come up with policies and ways that you work to avoid all that. Because the truth is you cannot really grow if you keep doing everything yourself and you always have to start working with other people and delegating. So the more processes you have to make things smoother, the better for you with your work. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that's how I do with stress. Um, as I said earlier, I'm generally very good team player. Um, especially with people who do things that are different from me because I always feel like it's an environment where we can learn different things um working with models working with photographers working with all that and i also do like sometimes getting 
opinions of the people I'm working with. Like if I'm working with a model, how does the outfit feel? Would you walk with this? Would you buy something like this? Photographers, do you think this photo um, really represents the outfit well? So I can have my own ideas, but sometimes I also will just consult to see their professional opinion. And when I work with people collaboration, especially in collaborations, I always like it to be a collaboration, not a loner project and you just happen to be a supporting character. So I like to show that there are two different things. If you look at my very old photos, you will realize that there is no real standardization of the photos in terms of how they look because you can tell I worked with different photographers and that is just because it was a collaboration. In my earlier days, it was I did a lot of collaborations with photographers that I can no longer afford. Yeah, because they went on and started becoming great and big, but I'm just honored that I worked with them and yeah, as much as maybe for them they have, they have gone way ahead of what they did for me, I still appreciate those photos. So I like working with different people. Working with Taylor is not a problem with me. I just have very strict rules on how I work. I'm going to definitely get more into all that next week when I'm talking about outsourcing and working with people and all that. So in a nutshell, yeah, it's always a good idea to work with people. You can't really do all these things alone. Yeah. So finally, the last question about trends. What I like a lot about the current phase we are in, in terms of, I guess, human beings, I don't know, is that fashion has become very, very personalized that to the point that there are people who even choose to live and breathe and dress in clothes that were worn in 18th century and it is okay. Or you will wear clothes that were popular in the 90s and it is okay or in the 80s and stuff like that. So fashion has become way more diverse. You don't have to follow any specific trends. There are some certain things that you see will influence um, maybe a version, maybe if you're wearing like the corsets I make, definitely they don't look like what they look like in the 18th century. But you'll find that maybe there's something trending right now that will influence how I make a certain corset or something. But I think right now there is more people wearing more unique things. It's very difficult for you to find people who look generally the same. Um, I think it's a great time to be in fashion as a designer because you can really personalize your style and just get your people who like that style and they buy it and you make a living and you move on. So that's what I can say. Um, that is also in the context of where I live. Maybe it's different in another country, but for me, I've seen in Kenya, it's very diverse. The only thing I have seen where people are very restricted could be if you're working in an office and they have a dress code, so places with dress codes or uniforms and stuff like that, of course you're a bit more restricted, but generally I've seen very diverse way people dress all sorts of ways. Yeah. So that's it from me. Um, this is the end of the 15 questions. So next week, as I have mentioned throughout the video, I am going to talk more about being employed versus being um, self-employed, also having workmates versus not having workmates. And I hope you'll be able to watch that next week. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching this video to the end and I guess I'll see you next week. Bye.